So you want to learn Go. Great choice. It's a great language with a very bright future. But the question is, where do you start? Just over a year ago, I started coding in Go. One of the things that I very quickly realized is that this language is not that hard to learn if you're already versed in programming. So I think that when you're looking at learning Go, there are two sort of camps you're gonna fall into. The first is you already know a programming language, you're already a developer, you're using something like TypeScript, Python, Ruby, Rust, whatever. You're using some language already and you're trying to migrate over towards Go to use it for some specific purpose. If I had to guess, it would be for backend web development, CLI apps, or maybe like background workers, cron job type thing, whatever it is, you're trying to migrate over to Go. That is the first camp, and the second camp is going to be those who are completely new to programming and you want to pick up Go as your first language. So let's talk about that second camp first. Those who are brand new to programming. If you are, great. It's a great thing, great stuff, definitely worth learning, but I personally would not recommend starting with Go. Go is not too complicated of a language and it's not too hard to pick up, but it's not as widely used as a lot of these other languages are and it lacks some of the resources that you're gonna get from some of the more traditional beginner languages. If you're brand new to programming, I would start with Python or JavaScript or TypeScript or something in that space. Learn that first, then come back to Go. Come to Go when you have a use for it, but if you don't have a need for it and you're just looking for a language to learn, I would start with those. I would start with Python or JavaScript or, you know, the general, the ones that are going to have really, really great beginner content and courses, because this is my stuff and a lot of other people's stuff in the Go world. It's more of intermediate and above. It's very much focused on, well, you already understand the basics of programming, of concepts like for loops, while loops, control structures, if statements, variables, scoping, packages, if all of that sounds like doesn't mean anything to you, then Go probably isn't the language for you, at least not yet. And that's not to say that you can't do it. And if you're brand new and you want to use Go, great, go for it. Give it a shot. It's going to be more of an uphill battle because there are far less resources in the Go world than there are in the Python world or the JavaScript world or whatever. So with that out of the way, let's talk about those who are trying to migrate to Go. And this is where I think most people are, and this is where I was. So when I migrated over to Go, the way I learned it and the way I think I would learn it again is I learned it by building stuff. So here are the sort of steps I would take. First, I would go ahead and I would follow the getting started guide on Go's website. It's a really great basic introduction. It'll get Go installed for you. It'll get you running a hello world program. It'll get all this stuff done. Run all of that, get that done, make sure you understand what happened there. And then from there, I would jump straight into building something. If you already understand programming concepts and you're coming from a C-like language like Java, C-sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, whatever, any of these general languages, which you 90% chance are coming from, Go is going to be really, really easy for you to pick up. It's not a difficult language to learn the basics of, although I do think it has a pretty high skill ceiling. And I think there's a lot of really, there's a lot of more nuanced and advanced concepts that you can learn in Go. And there's some pretty crazy stuff you can do, but just out the gate, just trying to write basic code, not going to be difficult. The syntax is pretty easy. And anytime you run into a roadblock, just Google it. And this is actually where I'm going to recommend, I would recommend not using like a video guide or something to like build a project or something. I would just pick some sort of project. So just come up with some idea of what to do. And then I would just try and build it only using the Go documentation or online like Stack Overflow posts type stuff. But I wouldn't just watch a video that's walking you through doing it because you are going to learn so much so fast by just actually building it. I don't. I think that when you're in the beginner stage and you don't know anything about programming yet, you should watch someone follow step by step. But if you already know how to program, you just need to learn the concepts and go. And the best way to do it is to just do it. So if you decide to take that route and you want to actually build something, here are some ideas of what you can actually build. The first one is going to be some sort of REST API that is going to involve um, some sort of REST API that implements CRUD. A really good example of this is like a to-do app or a library app or a books app or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be some sort of data set that you can read, write, update, and delete to. Very simple. Now, the stack that I would use for this, you're going to need some sort of uh, HTTP framework. You're going to need some sort of database. You're going to need some sort of ORM or way to communicate with the database. And that's kind of it. So what would I recommend for these? My personal stack and what I would recommend starting with, and then as you get better, you can pick your own, but this is just a starting point, would be Fiber for your HTTP framework. I would use MongoDB for your database. I know that in a lot of use cases, that's not the preferred, but for me, it works really well. I would use MongoDB, Fiber, 
and those two together that can get your app built the documentation for both fiber and the mongodb um, package for go they both have incredible docs and are very easy to pick up just off of those i highly recommend giving it a shot by just reading those you are going to learn so much so fast as compared to just watching someone else do it now all three of these examples i give i am going to eventually make videos actually going through and doing these but again i highly recommend try it on your own the next one is going to be uh, some sort of CLI app. This is probably easier to do than that first option is. This would be just, you don't need a framework for this. Just work on doing input and output. Just have it go in. And a great example of this would be like a calculator. Have the end user input what they want to do. They want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Enter number one, enter number two, put an output. Very simple. Gives you a very great introduction to control flow, how the package works. Um, how the language and stuff works. Maybe try and implement packages in here, try and break everything up, make it super clean and, you know, not too difficult, but it'll give you a great tour of the language. Then the final sort of idea would be like an aggregation cron type thing. So I think the third end use case, and these three are themed off of the three things that I think Go is really good for. That's uh, high performance backend APIs, high performance CLI apps, and high performance backend aggregation cron app background worker, that kind of thing. Just any sort of script that needs to run on a server in the cloud, but isn't serving to it, like isn't serving requests to an end user, just sort of any background worker type thing. So what this would be is make some sort of background worker, make something that's just gonna run on a schedule. I would highly recommend looking into the package Gokuron. That is a great way to get started. Look at that, try that out, read the docs, kind of go from there. Now, these three examples are great and you will learn a ton from doing this and just by Googling all the problems you come up with, you're gonna quickly get a very good understanding of the language. In my, um, in my case, when I learned this language, I picked it up really quickly because I just started trying to build insider viz with it. I knew nothing about the language and I just started trying to write it as I was like, okay, how do I break this up into multiple files? I looked it up and from there I went down the rabbit hole, learned about packages, figured out how all that, how all of that worked. Great. Now I know packages and I got something done on a real app. Then when I needed to go ahead and I needed to use XML, I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out how to do XML parsing and go went through and did that. And in the process, I learned about structs. I learned how they work. I learned about the serialization fields. I learned about all that stuff. Great. And you just keep going and going. And as you, as these problems arise, the solutions will teach you more than just looking at some other video will. So actually do it. Now, finally, I want to talk about the sort of key features of Go and the things that you should absolutely be looking out for. These are things that you will most likely encounter on your journey of actually building stuff, but they're absolutely worth pointing out and they're things that you should keep in mind. These are going to be pointers. Pointers in Go don't work the same way that they do in like C or something. You can use them that way, but generally speaking, I like to think of them as they're basically just passed by reference or passed by value. A great example of this would be like a struct method. We can pass in the like base struct as a pointer, and then whenever we mutate that data within the method it will actually change the underlying struct versus if we pass that in without a pointer it's not going to mutate anything underneath it's basically just passed by reference or passed by value the next thing is going to be concurrency this is one of the things that i think go is best for and one of the best features of it is how easy and simple and clean the concurrency model is uh that would be the key concepts in here are going to be go routines channels weight groups mutex uh, synchronization, all of that different stuff. There's a huge amount of depth you can go into here. And I think that this is really where the high skill portion of Go comes in. And this is where you can really start to optimize the language and get really good at it. Then there's going to be structs and struct methods. Those are, I mean, they're just objects effectively. They're just ways to store your data and deal with your data. Where they get cool is when you start implementing struct methods and you can do some really cool patterns where like you create a user object and then that user has some uh, methods attached to it. It's how a lot of packages work. A lot of really useful stuff is made that way. Then there's gonna be packages, obviously. Uh, this is something you're gonna learn very early on and you probably will just naturally run across, but how do I break my app into multiple files? How do I break it into multiple folders? How do I import all this stuff? That stuff you're gonna run into along the way and the best way to learn it is to do it. Then finally, error handling. One of the most controversial things about Go, it's basically just gonna look like this. It's if error not equal to nil, return nil comma error. That's generally how it's done. You can do it in a fancier way. You can do some nicer stuff, but there's no throwing. There's no try catching. There's just basically multiple returns. That's sort of the way it works. And you know, it works. It's some people like it. Some people don't. You can draw your own conclusions, but that's a very key concept that you're gonna have to learn. And you'll learn that very early on. So 
hopefully that gives you a good idea. I know that this isn't super specific on a lot of things, but the keys here are start with the getting started. There's great stuff there, follow it, and then just build something. That's how I would relearn it. I will eventually make I will eventually make a video going through and building all three of those different examples. They'll probably take about a half hour, 45 minutes, be longer form, but before any of that comes out or before any of that is there, give it a shot on your own. You will learn a lot from it and I think it's worth doing.